Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. Today we're going to have a look at some safe isolation. I'm going to set up some demonstrations on this board and equipment that's behind me here to show you how to isolate a single phase circuit, a three phase circuit and also the board in its full and some of the pitfalls that you will sometimes see people fall into on social media, certainly through the course of some of the campaigns we've seen around safe isolation. So I just want to cover off some of the base points and some of the things that you do need to take into account, hopefully in a way that's going to help you and also explain some of the times that you can end up working live without realising it and discuss some of the ins and outs around all of that as well. So without further ado, I'm going to demonstrate locking off this circuit here. So you'll see if I pop the little switch on just below, I think that's in shot. Yeah, you can see sockets in shot. I put a great big bright light firing straight back at me. So if I was to turn this off again, you can see it's going to turn the lights off, turn them back on. The circuit involved with that particular light and plug top is this one. So again, if we switch that off there, we now know that there's no electrical energy running to that light. But obviously, that's not a safe way of verifying safe isolation. It's just an easy visual way to demonstrate it on this video. We're lucky enough here that this is a double pole RCBO from Proteus. Well, I say double pole, there's that debate around switch neutral and whether it is double pole in its true intent or not. But in this case, we are opening both the line and the neutral. Now there's different requirements depending on the earthing system that you're working within. So if you're on a TNCS installation, it can be assumed that the neutral and the earth are tied together and you don't necessarily need to open the neutral to give you the required level of safe isolation. However, there are crossovers in terminology around some of these guidance documents and statutory documents and the electricity at work regulations is very clear on opening all live conductors, which includes the neutral. I guess the grey area comes into play is if the neutral is actually a live conductor when you've isolated the line on a TNCS system. I'm not going to get into the ins and outs of all of that, it's just to be aware of it. If you're working on other earthing systems, you will have to open both the line and neutral regardless. And this overcurrent protective device gives you that option. So if we were to lock this off now, we've opened up the line and the neutral, run into this plug, this socket down here. So if we need to do some maintenance on that, for example, swap the socket front, We've got a safe system of work to do that where we're not working live. If it was a single pole RCBO and we were on a, a TT or a TN system, then we would have to look at also opening the neutral via isolation of the main switch, for example, or other appropriate isolators that might be in the final circuit somewhere or pre the distribution board as well. But we'll get into all of that later on in the video. I'm just going to apply a lock to this um, RCBO here now and show you how you would do that in a safe way. Okay, so I'm using the, the TIS safe isolation kit that we've got here in the booths down at Apprentice One to One Academy. If I pop in this lock off toggle, I should have put my glasses on first because I can't actually see very well close up, but I managed to get it in there, which was a lucky first hit. Uh, we've got our padlock as well and our warning label. So if we pop that all into position, apply the padlock and remove the key. Now I know that that cannot now be energised, I can push and pull at that as much as I like, it is isolated. Obviously you would run through the process of safe isolation and we'll go over that at the end of this video for those of you who want to see it. But for the, for the moment we'll assume that's been done, so there's no electrical energy now down at this socket front and I can safely work on it, there's no access to any live parts. I've got the key on my person, this would all obviously be labelled as well. You note that the board's not actually labelled down here in these booths and that's because we change what these do all the time in terms of our demonstration. So we might have a socket wired in one day, but the next day it could be something entirely different. Um, we were just running out of label printers and ink, so we've left these blank for the time being. It's not a finished and final installation, but if you was out in the real world, obviously these circuits would be labelled and that would say socket below distribution board, for example. So we can um, safely carry out whatever it is we've come down here to do. But let's say we was wanting to work on um, a sub board, for example. So in these booths here, we've got distribution boards. For those of you who watch the channel, you will know this already in all of these booths. And if we needed to isolate one of those to go and do some work, so say we were changing an overcurrent protective device in the Schneider board over there, for example, you could make your isolation on one of these TPM breakers, which would open the three phases. So it would open L1, L2 and L3, but obviously it would leave the neutral in place. Now this is a TNCS install within um, our unit we've got here, so in theory that would be an acceptable way to go about things, but I always like to open the neutral as well if I can, and there's an easy and obvious way we can do that without causing too much inconvenience, and that's to isolate this board in full. So I'll run through the process of how you would do that just now. So you can see, looking, luckily enough on this board, we do have a four-pole main switch on this Proteus board. 
So again, we can use our toggle to go between the two holes within it. If I can get it in, again, bad eyesight restricting me more than anything else. But we pop that in there, again, apply the padlock and the label. Again, we'd have your telephone number, contact details, the reason for the isolation. We'll run through that process at the end of the video. But you can see now that's now locked off, can't turn the power back on. And we know that all of the final circuits from out of this distribution board are now isolated as well. So we could go off to the, the board that's over there in the booth opposite me with our proven unit voltage indicators and run through the safe isolation process and ensure that we've got no electrical energy over there as well. Now that's all well and good if we're wanting to work on the board that's over there, but what if we want to work on this board itself? It can be a difficult one if you are at the main intake of a, a commercial system. You know, we've got that here over at the other corner where we've got the main tails that when we arrived, we're coming into our first distribution board with no point of isolation within them. So if we was wanting to work within this Protease board that was over at the other side of the unit, Essentially, the only isolation we've got is the main switch coming in. Obviously, if you're going to change an overcurrent protected device within that board or wire in a final circuit, the incoming terminals on that main switch would still be energised. The approach we took with that was to get the DNO to come down and give us an isolation, and we've then installed a main switch external to that first board so we can isolate the electrical energy going into it. We had to get them to come out anyway because there was issues on the intake cable coming into our unit, and for those of you who haven't seen that, it's earlier on back in the channel when we first started to kit this place out. Um, but if you're not lucky enough to have that, you need to decide if it's unreasonable for you to be um, working live. So if you can't make the isolation for reasons that are maybe unknown to you only, um, you can go through the process of formalising a risk assessment and making sure you've got the appropriate PPE and methods in place to carry out live working, because that's what you would be doing. If you open that enclosure with live terminals within it, that is live working. And there are times when you are going to have to do that. So, for example, when you're gathering a ZE measurement or a ZDB, as I've demonstrated before, um, those values are going to need to be known in certain circumstances and situations. And it's important to understand that that is life working and also to have the methods in place for you to do it safely with appropriate PPE. Make sure you've considered arc flash and any associated PPE that might be involved with that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's one of those where there are certain environments where you're going to have to work live because it's unreasonable for the electrical energy to be turned off. You, know, you can think of certain scenarios in the railway industry or in power production or out in the, the DNO network. There are times when that's going to be inevitable. But certainly if you're having to change an overcurrent protective device within a, a circuit um, board such as this one, it's unlikely you're ever going to find a reasonable um, situation where that's going to be unavoidable. The only one I can think of off the top of my head is maybe a hospital environment. And even then, with the right planning and processes, it's probably going to be possible to give you the isolation you need, unless it's some reactive maintenance that's keeping the whole hospital out of use. And then, of course, that's when the appropriate risk assessments are carried out, that it's known live working and other things kick into play to help you along with that. But we're delving down a rabbit hole there that I didn't want to get into. It was more to cover off the safe isolation principles and um, where you would make your isolations and for what purpose. So with this one, we do actually have an isolation switch. You can just see it up there in the top corner. So this here is a, a isolator we put in place to kill all of the energy down to all of these booths. Obviously, this is a training environment and I wanted a point where I knew if I had isolated, if I had the key and the padlocks in place, that there's no electrical energy down in any of this area whatsoever and it's all under my control. So that's what we've done. If we apply a padlock now and isolate this, then we can safely work within this board and I'll demonstrate that just now. Okay, you'll see I've got my isolation in place on the rotary isolator up there. It cannot be moved now, so that's locked in the off position. And we know, having gone through the safe isolation procedure as you would with your proven unit and your voltage indicators, again, we'll cover that later on in the video, that everything in here now is isolated. So you can safely work within it if you need to swap the main switch itself, swap an MCB or an RCBO, um, add a new circuit, wire in some new terminals, whatever it is, it's a safe system for you to go to work and do that. Um, I'll now demonstrate a method that I've seen other people share on social media when we've had these campaigns around safe isolation of something that I don't think is safe and the right way to approach things and it's the wrong message to present. But it is out there so we'll cover it and I'll show you what I think is an unsafe way of isolating this board. Okay so you can see we've got the toggle in again on the main switch in the off position. We've got the lock in there as well so essentially that main switch can't be turned on. It is locked off in the off position so this spine board would have no electrical energy coming to it. 
the um, neutral bars would have no electrical energy coming to them either. But of course, these main terminals at the bottom of the main switch would still be live. If you had applied this lock during the course of trying to get your ZE and ZDB, um, again, that's more for virtuous reasons, I would say, because anybody who's coming in and around this board while you're not present is still going to have access to those live terminals. And actually, this is more a hindrance than a help because it's going to be in your way while you're inserting probes into the main switch. It's not going to give you a safe system of work and it's just going to muddy the waters and make you more likely to injure yourself during the course of what it is you're doing. So if you've got your big rubber gloves on and your GS38 probes and you're busy working away in here, they come into contact or you come into contact with a wrong piece of metal and terminal at the same time, you're going to have an issue for yourself. So that's not a safe system of work. You've still got the live terminals exposed just to re-emphasize that and it would be live working. So although you've applied a lock and you've got the key and the main switch is in the off position, you haven't moved away from live working. The barrier is removed, live terminals are exposed. Something to keep in mind when you are carrying out electrical work. When you think you might be safe and you've isolated with due diligence and good care because you've seen certain posts knocking around social media and you think that's the way you do it, um, often you know, you need to think twice. And that's why with this video, just to re-emphasize again, it's not instructional or how to. This is just me sharing some experience and pointing out some of the pitfalls in and around safe isolation and the basic principles of it. This kind of training is best delivered in person over a toolbox talk with your employer or with your training provider at college. There's so many different variables and variations to it, depending on what you are working on, that it's really important that you approach it in that way. It's not just about getting a a tick box exercise to see you're aware of safe isolation this is the thing that can help you ensure you stay safe and go home safe at the end of a working day it's not virtue signaling these things can happen electrical energy is a dangerous beast we work running around it all of the time and if you do make a mistake when an electrical system is live it can have very devastating consequences the accident and statistics are out there in and around it we do still have issues of electric shock during the course of people going to work and in the worst cases electrocution if by applying a lock and turning the circuit off you keep yourself safe then just do it just think about it so we'll have a look now at safe isolation itself we'll get some of the bits of equipment you're going to need some of the instructions to follow as well and we'll talk through it and see exactly what it is you should be doing to ensure you've got the isolation and safe system of work you're going to need. I'll just get that set up right now. Okay, so you can see I've got the main switch opened up there, so we know that there's no electrical energy coming down into this distribution board now. I'll just pan you down a bit so we can see inside the board. You can see I've got my proving unit set up in the corner there. We've got some voltage indicators as well, so we can run through the process of safe isolation. I'm going to talk through it rather than demonstrate it. For those of you who want to go and see me actually carrying out safe isolation, there's loads of videos prior to this where you can check it out. But Proteus have kindly provided Apprentice one to one with a few of these lock off kits to give out. We've also got the TIS safe isolation kits as well. So we've got those things to hand. I'm going to run through this nice 10 step instruction sheet that is on the Proteus leaflet in the box with their padlock and um, lockout kit. And it says here before you start, you need to get permission from the authorized and appropriate person. So that's speaking with the client, making sure that they're happy for you to carry out the authorization, that users of the system are aware of it and that everybody's in agreement that you can go forward with the intended work. You then need to find your spot. So again, working with the authorized person, review diagrams, drawings, identify where the isolation can be made. In our case, this main switch up here will provide isolation to the distribution board for us to do some work. You then need to check your equipment. So check your proving unit, your leads, and your voltage indicators. All your locks are in good order to make sure that the system um, is gonna work when you're actually applying it to the installation. So that's all the basics. Check your calibration as well, if appropriate. And then test it out. So you'll check the voltage indicator on the proving unit to make sure it works, that you're getting the right indication of voltage, and that it is working as intended. You'll then switch off. So you can see I've already done that up there anyway, but you would go through the process of switching it off and making it secure. So applying your lock, making sure you fit all of the required information to the warning label as well, that it shouldn't be turned back on, that your contact details are on there, the reason for the isolation and when, when the isolation was made. You then need to um, warn others, which is what I've just covered there. So that's step seven. So it says to put a warning label on, etc. Test the circuit. So you would go across the main switch here and ensure you've got no electrical energy between all the live conductors and to air. So make sure there's no voltage anywhere at all. And then you would check your instrument again. So you would check your voltage indicator within the proving unit to make sure it was still working. 
and then you're all good to go. You know that this is now isolated, you can carry out the work that's um, required and keep yourself safe during the process of doing it. Okay, so that's just a brief demonstration of how you would run through safe isolation. As I say, speak to your employer, speak to your training provider and get that tuition close up and in person. I hope you found it useful. You'll often see some of the commentary from industry about reckless young electricians working inside live distribution boards. As I said earlier on in this video, there'll be times when you might need to be exposed to live terminals, gathering a measurement of ZE, for example, testing on the outgoing terminals of an RCD, or if it's unreasonable to have the electrical system um, isolated for the course of any work. And that's when the risk assessment appropriate methods are put into place for you to be at work live. It's understanding when you are live working as well. You will see some debate and discussion around electricians working unnecessarily inside live distribution boards. Um, that's not the case. If you're in here changing an overcurrent protective device, for example, and you've got a means of isolation, then use it. It's keeping yourself safe. It's removing that potential for any danger. Same if you're swapping a circuit accessory. Make sure you go through the process of isolating the energy before you start messing about with the wiring system and that you are checking and ensuring that's in place and that you're the person responsible for that lock off as well, that you keep the key on your person. If your, your boss or supervisor or anyone else wants to have a lock and key there as well, use the hasp as I did up on that top switch. You can apply multiple locks then and make sure yours is one of them. So you know when you remove your lock, you're happy for it to be do so, do so and it's not in the hands solely of somebody else. So I hope that video was useful and it's provided some content that might help you. It is quite a basic principle, but it's one of the founding things that we're all supposed to understand and work within out doing the day job. So making sure we're keeping ourselves safe and we understand when we are live working. There are people who will share content that young electricians are out there working dangerously inside distribution boards all the time. Obviously raising awareness and the discussion around all of this is important, but let's not demean and belittle other people just for effect and attention. These things do go on in our industry, we know they do. It's about encouraging a different and safer way to, to work at the end of the day. Um, carrying out a safe isolation is no real hardship, it's easily done. It can just be a case of you keeping control of an installation through a central locking point or a final circuit, whatever method you use, just ensure that the thing you're working on at the end of that circuit or piece of equipment is actually isolated and that you run through the process of checking. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, drop them in below and I will see you on the next one.